McCabe TOE diagrams are used by chemical engineers in order to model the composition of the vapor and liquid mole fraction of a component in a distillation column. And it's very important to make note here that we are dealing with binary systems, two component systems. So we have a component A and a component B, and our job is to concentrate the more volatile component generally into our distillate and recover our less volatile component in our bottoms tray, in our bottom stream. And so from a high level, if we were to kind of draw a black box around a distillation column, we're gonna have a feed going into some tray and out the top of this distillation column, there's gonna be a distillate that I've denoted with a flow rate D, as well as a bottoms stream B. And each one of these streams is gonna have some composition of one of your components. So we're only gonna be focusing on one of the components in your two component binary system. And generally, we're gonna be looking at the more volatile component. But for the sake of this example, X sub F refers to the mole fraction of component A, for instance, within your feed stream, okay? And so the way we go about making mccabe tilly diagrams is by first plotting the line Y equals X. So if you were gonna do this in Excel or MATLAB, just plot the line Y equals X to get a nice line uh, with a slope of one and a Y intercept of zero. Uh, and then in addition to that, this is the part where we're gonna look up the tabulated values uh, in thermodynamics reference books in order to create this thing called a vapor liquid equilibrium curve. And so essentially what this is referring to is that there's a point at which a chemical potential equilibrium is realized between a particular component within the liquid and vapor phase. And this varies based on the species that you're dealing with. So in the case of water and ethanol, uh, this curve is gonna look a little bit different, but for the sake of this generic example, uh, this is what we're gonna have. And so um, the next thing to make a note of when you're working with mccabe tui diagrams is the lines that we're gonna be creating. We're gonna have three lines on our diagram in addition to the VLE curve and the Y equals X line that we just drew. And so the thing to remember from algebra is that a line is defined to be nothing more than one point and a slope. And so with uh, mccabe tui diagrams, the very first thing you're gonna do is look at your feed composition, X sub F. And let's say in this example that our feed going into our binary distillation column had a mole fraction of 0.5. So that means I'm just gonna look up this 0.5 mark until I intersect this line. And we're gonna be creating something now called the Q line. And quality in these binary distillation columns is equivalent to the liquid mole fraction of your feed. So, if your quality is one, that indicates that all of your feed is liquid. You have no vapor phase. And if your quality is zero, then that means you have no liquid present and all of your feed is in its vapor phase. And so uh, generally you'll be dealing with feeds that can be a composition of both a liquid and vapor phase. So um, you would get a line and this quality line commonly denoted the Q line, we'll have a slope, I denote M, of Q over Q minus one. And so what this tells us is that if all of our feed is liquid, Q will be equal to one. And if Q is equal to one, then our denominator here is gonna equal zero. So this is gonna have a slope of infinity. So in that case, our Q line will just be a straight line pointing up if feed is all liquid. Now, if our feed is pure vapor, our quality will be zero, so our uh, slope, our M value, will have a, quantity, a value of zero over zero minus one, which is equal to zero. So in the case of our feed being nothing but pure liquid, this is, we would get a horizontal line that looks like this liquid. 
okay? And so uh, typically, uh, especially in exam settings, uh, your quality line will be a mesh or a, a mix of uh, the uh, vapor and liquid flow rate. And so in that case, we're going to be dealing with quality lines that have roughly a 45 degree angle. And so if your quality line is indeed a 45 degree angle, has a slope of minus one, that indicates that you have a 50-50 ratio of liquid to vapor uh, in terms of moles of your feed. Okay, so I'm just gonna erase some of this stuff to make it a little bit cleaner. And we're gonna assume that our Q line here has this value. Uh, so our Q line has a point of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and we got that from our X sub F value, our mole ratio of our component that we're interested in, in our feed. And we're also going to be saying now that it is a 50-50, our feed consists of a 50-50 mix of vapor and liquid. Consequently, it's going to have a slope of minus one and it's going to make a 45 degree angle. Okay, and so moving on, we're going to be talking about something called the rectifying line. And the rectifying line refers to the top half of uh, your distillation column. And so your feed, assuming this is your feed tray right here, everything above it is going to be where this rectifying line is alluding to. And so the point here is that your distillate is going to have some composition of your more volatile component or your component of interest called X sub D. And so in this case, let's say we, we, we wanted to concentrate our component of interest to a 90 mole percent ratio in our distillate. And so what we're going to do now is look to the point 0 0.9 and then simply move up this plot here, like so, and we're gonna hit this diagonal, and now we're going to look at what we call the rectifying line. Rectifying line, okay. And so the rectifying line is gonna have a slope of L over L plus D, and uh, there's a term called reflux ratio that will be very important later on in discussions regarding distillation, um, but for uh, an introduction in this video, what L is referring to is the mole flow rate of liquid going back down your column. And so if you've ever operated a distillation column in practice, uh, within your condenser, which is the very top part of your distillation column, you're going to have some valve that is uh, going to be opening and shutting at set intervals, and that will dictate your reflux ratio. And so um, based on your reflux ratio, you can send all of your liquid back down the column, and you would do this if you wanted to get a higher concentration of your more volatile component but you do this at the cost of not being able to extract product on the outside. And so um, what L is referring to here is how much you are sending back down your column. And so in this case, if L is equal to zero, that means that you are not sending anything back down your column. And if L is equal to zero, then the slope of this line will be zero. And so you would just get a straight line like this. But uh, in this case, we are not going to uh, be doing that, we are going to be sending some of our liquid back down the tray. And so we would look at the number of moles that are flowing back down our distillation column, and that would be our value L. And then we would also take into account the number of moles in our distillate, D, and we would use those values to compute our rectifying line slope. And again, lines are nothing more than one point on a plane and a slope. So in this case, we already have the point here, which would be 0 0.9, 0 0.9 on, these, on this Cartesian coordinate system. And then the slope is gonna have something that looks like this. And um, it is important to use rulers if you're doing this on paper because you really want these lines to be straight um, on, your, on your homework to get accurate counts of the number of trays you're gonna need, which we're gonna get to in a little bit. Okay, and so, We've just defined our rectifying line. So I'll put little numbers here, one and two. So our Q line was one and our rectifying line was two. 
And then finally, we're going to have something called a stripping line. And so the stripping line is going to refer to everything below your feed tray of your binary distillation column. And uh, essentially, we are just going to generally you'll be given uh, this value. You're going to know a priority or sometimes you have to solve for this, but your bottoms composition. And so the bottoms composition of your component of interest, the mole fraction within that bottoms tray is going to be, in this case, we're going to go with 0 0.1. So this is X sub B, 0 0.5 was your feed, and 0 0.9 is X sub D. Um, and so what we get here is another point on our graph. And an important thing to make note of with these mccabe Tilly diagrams is that all three of the lines will always intersect. That is a property uh, intrinsic to mccabe Tilly diagrams. And so you just need two lines to be able to fully define uh, the rest of your mccabe Tilly diagram. So in this case, I've already defined our Q line and our rectifying line. So we can very easily draw hopefully a little bit more decently, um, we can draw our stripping line like this. Okay, and so now that we've gotten to this point that we have are able to fully define our three lines, we can figure out how many trays we're going to need in this process, as well as the location of your feed tray. Okay, and so question is, how many trays are needed to get XD equal to 0 0.9 with a feed XF of 0 0.5? So if I gave you a stream consisting of 50% of your species of interest and I tell you I want to get that to 90% concentration of our species of interest so we can sell this product on the market. How are we going to do that? We were we just made this McCabe Tilly diagram and now we can figure out how many trays we're going to need in our binary distillation column to get this. And so the way we do that is pretty cool. What we're going to do is we're going to start at our bottoms tray and we're just going to make a little ladder or staircase going up. And so we just do these little staircase things and we go over like this and you keep going until the rightmost uh, line on that staircase is has a higher value than what your goal was here because um, what this means is that in an ideal world if we had a perfect binary distillation column our distillate is going to really have uh, this value, which is even more pure than what I demanded in the problem statement. But um, for the sake of defining what a minimum number of trays is based on this uh, binary or this McCabe Tilly diagram, uh, this is sufficient. And so uh, in this situation, if I wanted to tell you how many trays we're going to need, the, the key thing to take home is, and I'll try to draw this really, every touch of the VLE equals one more tray. Okay, and so what I mean by that is every single time our staircase uh, elbow touched the red line, we are going to need another tray because we're going to need to reach equilibrium one more time. And in this example, because we're dealing with an ideal uh, binary distillation column, we're assuming that our trays are reaching equilibrium. And so in this case, what we're finding is that we're going to need one tray right here, a second tray, a third tray, four, five, and six. So in this case, our answer is six trays are needed. And the next question you can be asked on a basic exam is where to put your feed tray. And so in this example, 
you put your feed tray where the staircase changes operating lines. And so what we see here is that at, at our third touch of the vapor, liqu vapor liquid equilibrium line, we changed from our rectify we changed from our stripping line to our rectifying line operating lines and so what this means is that our third tray from the bottom would be the tray at which we would put our feed in order to achieve this uh, in order to achieve, to achieve the optimal separation with the minimum number of trays and so if you were to not put it at tray number three, you're gonna need more trays to get the 90% minimum purity in your distillate composition. Okay, and so that's gonna wrap things up for the introduction to McCabe-Teeley diagrams. And in future, vi in other videos, you can learn more about reflux ratios um, and boil up ratios, which are things that dictate the slopes of the rectifying and stripping line that we have just talked about. Um, and I would also like to make a note of how it is common on exams, you will be given um, essentially completed McCabe-Teeley diagrams, and they're gonna be hitting you up with questions like, tell me what our bottoms composition is, tell me what our feed composition is, our distillate composition, tell me what the quality of our feed is. And it pays dividends to know that you can find these so easily by looking at a McCabe-Teeley diagram, simply by looking down the X values for each one of these lines that we have here. So we had line one, our Q line, line two, our rectifying line, and line three was our stripping line. And from these three lines, we were able to find our feed, distillate, and bottoms composition respectively. And so I hope you guys find this useful and thanks for watching.